Wish TV shows you the sights and sounds of the Indy Pride Parade. The in-person celebrations return and some of the city's best known employers show their support. I'll catch up with Travis Shoemake, the first openly gay NHRA funny car driver. He's finding success with drag racing and more. And everyone deserves a safe, caring place to call home. Learn about Trinity Haven, an organization that helps find LGBTQ youth, housing and a helping hand. Celebrating Pride Month on Wish TV, brought to you by Buick, Indiana Funeral Care, and C.H. Douglas and Gray Wealth Management. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Celebrating Pride. I'm Phil Sanchez. And I'm Alexis Rogers. Uh, Indy Pride began back in 1996 as a week-long gathering taking place along the canal. And as it grew, moving to the American Legion Mall and finally locating at Military Park in 2017. And after a pandemic pause, the Indy Pride Parade returned bigger and better than before. Listen, I was thrilled to walk in the parade route along Wish TV's with Cody Adams and Camilla Fernandez. Of course, the superhero Flash, uh, and as well as my dog Izzy. Sure. But we followed the Sports 8 Hummer and we had a great time. Met some great new friends along the route. Take a look. <laughs> We haven't had a festival in two years and to be back at the festival and just soaking all the love and acceptance is just it just fills me up and makes me so <laughs> I think it's great. It's my first Pride ever, so I'm having fun. We just got here, so it's really exciting. I'm having a lot of fun. I think it's just beautiful. I, I love that the crowd is so big. I think a lot of people kind of underestimate Indianapolis, but we got a big crowd here, and it's just beautiful. It's so wonderful. <laughs> she needed to be out to have a good time, be around a great environment. She was a little anxious staying at home, didn't want her to be home alone. You know, everyone here is welcome. Um, everyone deserves their voice heard. Everyone deserves to be felt loved, to be cared for, to be protected by our own community, you know? So definitely here to show support, to uh, make sure we share the love. <laughs> Just the variety of people, I think. Um, I personally like seeing the older veterans that are out here um, and the drag queens. They're fantastic. Definitely like the amount of churches and like unexpected groups here, I think is very cool. <laughs> Part of the community. I'm a bisexual woman and to be able to come amongst all of my other community, you know, my alphabet mafia, it is absolutely just great. Like we, we get to be accepted, we can do whatever we want, we can just be free and not have to look over our shoulders. This is the place to do it and to just fully be yourself. We want to support everyone. Um, I want to make sure that he's exposed to different people, different types of people, um, and grows up accepting everyone and being welcoming to everyone. I came just to celebrate, have a good time, get out the house, enjoy the people, see some faces, love everybody. Don't judge nobody, you never know. Be happy. A historical marker now stands on Monument Circle that commemorates Indiana's first large outdoor pride event. It was back in 1990 that celebration on the circle provided a public space for attendees to socialize, learn about their rights and hear from AIDS activists. Despite the presence of protesters, the event empowered attendees, challenged social stigmas and welcomed a, a range of sexual and gender expressions. And this event eventually led to the first Circle City Pride Festival. And speaking of festivals, when we come back, we'll take you to the 2022 Indy Pride Festival at Military Park. He's an up and coming drag racer who's inspiring others. Meet Travis Shoemake as Wish TV's Celebrating Pride special continues. Celebrating Pride Month on Wish TV, brought to you by Buick, Indiana Funeral Care, and C.H. Douglas and Gray Wealth Management. Trinity Haven is an organization that helps find LGBTQ youth find a safe place to live. 
Trinity Haven offers services for those ages 16 to 24 and offers a caring community for those who need it. As you'll see, finding a safe, affirming place to call home can sometimes be a challenge. Trinity Haven is Indiana's very first and only transitional housing program designed specifically for LGBTQ youth who are experiencing housing instability or homelessness. Trinity Haven was founded by a group of people at Trinity Episcopal Church. They were trying to determine what to do with a house on their property, and that's when they learned through a series of interviews with several nonprofit organizations in town that LGBTQ young people were experiencing homelessness at an alarming rate. And so the people at the church determined that they wanted to help make a difference in the lives of these young people and, and really make a commitment to their belief that every human it has dignity and is worth that dignity and being treated with dignity and respect. They convened several different members of our community to learn and research and put together those best practices. So Trinity Haven was born out of that process. And we're not a faith-based organization, but we were founded by those people of faith who really wanted to make the, the case that people of faith are welcoming and affirming to LGBTQ folks um, and that we can serve people and meet them where they are and help them along their journey. Being exited from your home or your family of origin simply for being who you are, lesbian or gay or transgender or non-binary and any of the other beautiful parts of our community is one of the most devastating aspects of this work for me um, as a member of the LGBTQ community myself. Having this opportunity to serve these young people where they are and help them create community together with each other, with our team, our staff, and then the networks of support that we have access to can help, our hope is, change the trajectory of their lives so that they don't end up accessing those systems of support forever and avoiding chronic homelessness, waking up on your 18th birthday to a bag packed and a note from your family saying, you're no longer welcome here, get out, is a whole different entry into the experience of being houseless, homeless, family-less. And while we can never replace those unique relationships and the family of origin, we are trying to not only offer a safe, secure space to sleep at night, but also the support services, the love and the care that can fill a little bit of that hole that was left so that a young person has time to heal and learn how to um, create family of choice. Monetary donations are the number one thing that helps us sustain the work. Um, we can use uh, unrestricted donations towards keeping the lights on, buying toilet paper and groceries, paying our incredible staff, um, but there are also opportunities to donate. We need toilet paper all the time. We need laundry detergent. There are ways to do drives for those sorts of things and to coordinate with our team a pickup or drop off and how to help literally support the young people here and the things that they're doing every single day. The biggest volunteer opportunity that we have to offer is to become a host in our host homes program. Because in addition to this house where we provide two years of transitional housing for young people, we also have a host homes program which matches young people with hosts who are here in Marion County or the Donut Counties and they match together um, for a young person to stay in the home of an individual or family and have a more intimate uh, family-like environment versus a shared housing experience. Because this isn't for everyone and that's okay. But the Host Homes program is meant to be about a six month commitment and opportunity for that young person to work with our staff and then get closer to being independent in a shorter amount of time. I mean, my biggest hope is that an organization like this doesn't even have to exist anymore. Like, let us work ourselves out of a job and treat others the way that they would want to be treated so that we can continue to embrace those who are experiencing something that they need a little help to get through. And it doesn't turn into this 
chronic continuing cycle of homelessness or need for support or lack of awareness that we just lead with with love and treat each other better than we had ever hoped that we would be treated. That's my biggest hope. And that we celebrate each other as opposed to pointing out what our differences are. Celebrating Pride Month on Wish TV, brought to you by Buick, Indiana Funeral Care, and C.H. Douglas and Gray Wealth Management. Trinity Haven is an organization that helps find LGBTQ youth find a safe place to live. Trinity Haven offers services for those ages 16 to 24 and offers a caring community for those who need it. As you'll see, finding a safe, affirming place to call home can sometimes be a challenge. Trinity Haven is Indiana's very first and only transitional housing program designed specifically for LGBTQ youth who are experiencing housing instability or homelessness. Trinity Haven was founded by a group of people at Trinity Episcopal Church. They were trying to determine what to do with a house on their property, and that's when they learned through a series of interviews with several nonprofit organizations in town that LGBTQ young people were experiencing homelessness at an alarming rate. And so the people at the church determined that they wanted to help make a difference in the lives of these young people and, and really make a commitment to their belief that every human it has dignity and is worth that dignity and being treated with dignity and respect. They convened several different members of our community to learn and research and put together those best practices. So Trinity Haven was born out of that process. And we're not a faith-based organization, but we were founded by those people of faith who really wanted to make the, the case that people of faith are welcoming and affirming to LGBTQ folks. Um, and that we can serve people and meet them where they are and help them along their journey. Being exited from your home or your family of origin simply for being who you are, lesbian or gay or transgender or non-binary and any of the other beautiful parts of our community is one of the most devastating aspects of this work for me um, as a member of the LGBTQ community myself. Having this opportunity to serve these young people where they are and help them create community together with each other, with our team, our staff, and then the networks of support that we have access to can help, our hope is, change the trajectory of their lives so that they don't end up accessing those systems of support forever and avoiding chronic homelessness, waking up on your 18th birthday to a bag packed and a note from your family saying, you're no longer welcome here, get out, is a whole different entry into the experience of being houseless, homeless, family-less. And while we can never replace those unique relationships and the family of origin, we are trying to not only offer a safe, secure space to sleep at night, but also the support services, the love and the care that can fill a little bit of that hole that was left so that a young person has time to heal and learn how to um, create family of choice. Monetary donations are the number one thing that helps us sustain the work. Um, we can use uh, unrestricted donations towards keeping the lights on, buying toilet paper and groceries, paying our incredible staff, um, but there are also opportunities to donate. We need toilet paper all the time. We need laundry detergent. There are ways to do drives for those sorts of things and to coordinate with our team a pickup or drop off and how to help literally support the young people here and the things that they're doing every single day. The biggest volunteer opportunity that we have to offer is to become a host in our host homes program because in addition to this house where we provide two years of transitional housing for young people we also have a host homes program which matches young people with hosts who are here in marion county or the donut counties 
and they match together um, for a young person to stay in the home of an individual or family and have a more intimate uh, family-like environment versus a shared housing experience. Because this isn't for everyone and that's okay. But the Host Homes program is meant to be about a six month commitment and opportunity for that young person to work with our staff and then get closer to being independent in a shorter amount of time. I mean, my biggest hope is that an organization like this doesn't even have to exist anymore. Like let us work ourselves out of a job and treat others the way that they would want to be treated so that we can continue to embrace those who are experiencing something that they need a little help to get through. And it doesn't turn into this chronic, continuing cycle of homelessness or need for support or lack of awareness that we just lead with with love and treat each other better than we had ever hoped that we would be treated that's my biggest hope and that we celebrate each other as opposed to pointing out what our differences are Celebrating Pride Month on Wish TV, brought to you by Buick, Indiana Funeral Care, and C.H. Douglas and Gray Wealth Management. Welcome back to Celebrating Pride. This year also marked Indy's first Latinx Pride event aimed at the LGBTQ community. News aide Camilla Fernandez introduces us to Rachel Knowles, a drag queen who's performing all across the Midwest. We are a Puerto Rican princess, uh, and, and it's really important for me to give that to the people. Rachel Knowles is a drag queen in Indianapolis. She moved from Puerto Rico to Indiana four years ago with the goal to uplift people through her dancing and Latinx pride. My drag is like kind of oldie, so I do like old like 90 or 20 uh, songs. So that brings memories to people. So uh, that makes people happy and, and, and and fun and that's what I like. Now she's performing all across the Midwest while working two jobs. Rachel has a twin brother and she says since coming out her family has always been supportive of her. And something more important that I have that unfortunately this other people don't is my, my family support. I thought my family gonna be like going crazy. My mom did crazy. But all my brothers and, and my dad just like my dad was like hmm. It's your body, not mine. Dalia Desire comes from a Puerto Rican family. Desire moved to Indiana from New York at the age of 11. Desire is a local burlesque and drag artist known for their soulful, sultry, and provocative performances. With the art forms that are going to Latinx Pride, that is an opportunity to educate. It is an opportunity to see a different lifestyle than your own. And it's an opportunity to learn and grow and, um, you know, gain a new sense of community. As an Afro-Latinx non-binary person, Desire also performs across the Midwest using all kinds of music, including Motown and Afro-Caribbean music. But Desire has been met with some challenges along the way. Because striptease is involved, some people aren't as accepting as uh, others in my family, but they still wish me the best. Now these two performers are looking forward to getting on the big stage for Latinx Pride. I'll be performing everywhere, in every kind of bar and several places. But this big event, like, um, and like Latin Eggs, is really um, special for me. It's like my community and it's something I can show everybody what we can do and what we are here for. I'm able to show people that you can be Latin and still be heavy metal. You can be, you know, Latin and still be alternative. You can, you know, um, yeah, you can look however you want to look. Celebrating Pride Month on Wish TV, brought to you by Buick, Indiana Funeral Care, and C.H. Douglas and Gray Wealth Management. Welcome back to Celebrating Pride. Behind the wheel and on the track, he's setting records. But when he's not racing, this driver is known for being an advocate for inclusivity. Meet the NHRA's first openly gay driver. It's a true love story of wheels, cars, and racetracks. For Travis Shoemake, it was a no-brainer to keep the family tradition going. I know you come from a racing family, but how did you decide, hey, this is something I want to do? I grew up around the sport of drag racing, you know, in the pits and in the staging lanes. Uh, my dad got me into competitive shifter kart racing as a teenager, uh, kind of as the best way to get racing experience, you know, be side by side, close to the ground at high speeds, navigating turns. Uh, so I was racing go-karts until I was about 15 when, unfortunately, my, my father passed away. 
Uh, so I took about a 15 year hiatus from that from that adventure uh, in, in drag racing and in the beginning of quarantine, you know, realized that that was a chapter of my life that maybe closed too soon. And after a short break, Shoemake is finally living his lifelong dream of drag racing. He goes on to explain the difference between the Indy 500 and the NHRA US Nationals, which will take place right here on this very track. The speeds are far more intense, right? So it's still, although Formula One and IndyCar are, you know, both high intensity, certainly more of an endurance sport compared to my 3.9 seconds down the racetrack. Uh, so I'd say, you know, the two biggest differences are the adrenaline and, and the rush of that launch for both the fan and the driver. And then also the, the you know, the, the fan that watches is different. I think, uh, you know, you're gonna find an IndyCar and Formula One, a little bit more of an international, maybe even a younger crowd. Do you feel some type of responsibility to other athletes like yourself? Uh maybe for kind of holding that as a badge of honor. NASCAR has done a great job this year of elevating diverse voices and, you know, making a, a, a putting their stake in the ground on the topic of LGBT inclusion in their sport. But drag racing has been a leader in diversity since the 70s. You know, we've had African-American, female, Hispanic, world champions for the last 40, 50 years. So me being the first LGBTQ driver in this sport, you know, isn't that big of a deal because we are, we've been turning heads and kind of changing and setting the pace in diversity since the beginning. Uh, so it's important for me because there are so many more fans that could be coming to the drag strip, so many more sponsors that could be on the sides of cars, if we just remind everyone that we are completely open to everyone. And so I do feel there is a bit of a responsibility that I've taken on to ensure that I am successful in the sport and that I you know, lay the groundwork for future generations of drivers. Racing is not his only passion. He's also heavily involved with LGBTQ plus homeless youth, and that started many years ago. Coming from a, a family that was extremely embracing of my sexuality and supporting me, I, I realized that there are those that are not in that same situation. In fact, the, the numbers continue to get larger. So in my home state of Arizona, more than 50% of youth that come out when they're a teenager in some areas are disenfranchised and kicked out of their home. So coming from a home that was warm and embracing, I felt that there was a responsibility, I felt really since being in, in college, to give back and to provide opportunities to show support to, to those in need. But now, his focus is the fall. The U.S. Nationals, that's our big race. So that's our Daytona 500, that's our Indy 500. The U.S. Nationals is, is the biggest race of the, of the season. It's a race that my dad has competed in and made it to the final round. Um, over 10 times in his career, it's a big race, you know, for uh, for me to get back to. So last year I was there, uh, you know, as a fan and as a licensed driver, but this year will be my first year competing in the category and top up all dragster. I'm most most excited to be in Indianapolis, where motorsports is, you know, all major motorsports are based, and we're seeing the shift in diversity being um, so important to both NASCAR, IndyCar, Formula One, and in drag racing. And uh, to do it in Indianapolis, where the fans are the best and you know the crowds are the largest, uh, to do it to do it in Indianapolis this September is going to be a big deal for me and I think for the LGBT community in motorsports. Celebrating Pride Month on Wish TV, brought to you by Buick, Indiana Funeral Care, and C.H. Douglas and Gray Wealth Management. You can see more Celebrating Pride moments on our website, wishtv.com. And from all of us here at Wish TV, thank you. For joining us. And we leave you with more sights and sounds from the Indy Pride Parade and Festival. Be encouraged.